evening, everybody. Glad to see y'all here this evening. We all will stand and turn to hymn number 648. Hymn number 648, singing all four verses of Love Divine, All Love's Excelling.
Good evening. Certainly we want to continue to uh, support uh, Annie Armstrong and uh, we want to give and try to uh, surpass the goal that uh, has been set. And so uh, you pray about it and, and give as you can and as the Lord blesses. Uh, take your Bible turn it uh, again once again to uh, Esther chapter 7 and you can hold that open and we're going to pick up uh, where we left off this, this morning and we want to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come and we bow before you this evening. Uh, we thank you, Father, for your presence this, this day. We ask, Father, now, Lord, that you, you would, uh, Lord, uh, just guide us and direct us uh, by your Holy Spirit. And I uh, pray that you'd uh, bless your people. And, Lord, as we look to the Word, uh, Lord, for strength, for help, uh, for guidance, and, uh, Lord, uh, for the way we should uh, live and uh, practice our life each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We look this morning, we want to pick up where uh, we found that Haman uh, is in real trouble. He's come to the place where he's filled with terror uh, in his heart, and it seems like that uh, the whole world has fallen apart around him. Uh, it's coming down on his shoulders. And verse 7 says, Haman stood, stood up to make a request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw uh, there was uh, evil determined against him by the king. And so now the king is upset. And uh, this man, Haman, may have thought that he was, uh, he was going to get uh, away with what he had, had planned get by with it, that's what sinners think. Now, people that sin, well, it's okay. Uh, it's not going to hurt anyone but me. Is that true? Uh, it affects everyone around you. Uh, a sinner thinks that, uh, well, they never think that they're going to get caught. Uh, a man commits a crime, he doesn't plan on getting caught. He thinks he's going to stay free for the rest of his life. And so uh, maybe he thought he could just make these evil plans and uh, carry out these evil deeds, go undetected and unpunished. I think about the man that shot me. Uh, as far as I know, he's never been caught. But one day, one day he'll stand at the bar and he'll be found guilty. And then he'll serve his time. He'll be punished for what he's done. Sometimes we wonder about evil men in the world. We wonder if there ever will be a time, if there will ever be a time, that they will pay for their sins. I think about that old Hitler, and I think about Putin over there. Uh, there's going to come a day when uh, he'll have to pay for his atrocities, for all of these people that's being killed over there, just uh, just murdered, annihilated. We see Haman, he was moving across, through, oh, Hitler was, moving across Hitler like a scourge. Uh, he thought he thought that uh, he had the most awesome power in all the world. His tanks were unbeatable, those, those tanks he had. Uh, he just could not be beaten. Uh, he didn't think there was a solution. Uh, no help, uh, it seemed. Hitler was just going absolutely all over the place, taking over the whole world. Yet before it was over, before it was over, Hitler found himself in a bunker in Berlin like the whimpering dog that he was. Uh, cowered down in that bunker, and his kingdom came crashing down. Around him. That's what's going to happen to Putin. It's, it's going to take place. That's exactly what happened to this man Haman. He's, he's not a big dog anymore. You know, a big man. He's a little man. He's a power hungry man. He's a man who's interested in himself, advancement. God has a way of bringing people down. God's got a way. Bringing them down to their size. 
God has a way of dealing with people who think they're going unpunished in this world in which we live. You look at verse 8, then the king returned out of, out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet wine. And Haman was fallen on the bed whereon queen, the queen was laid. Now you know back in those days, they didn't have chairs. They had, they had these things that, kind of like a bean bag. Uh, we think of that today. And they just sit around on them. Here's the queen uh, reclined on her bed or on her couch, so to speak. And so, old Haman, he realizes he has one shot, one last opportunity, one last chance to appeal to the queen. Isn't that, isn't that an interesting thing? Here's a man who got angry because Mordecai, the Jewish man, would not bow down. Wouldn't bow down. And so he got himself in a mess. And now Haman is having to bow down before Mordecai and this Jewish woman. This, this woman here, Esther, got to bow down. Here's a man who got in trouble of his own anger against a Jewish man. You know, sometimes you fall out with a fellow. I know a guy, well, I drank coffee with a guy. And I'm going to tell you, he must not ever get to talk at home. Because he just opens up and he'll just unleash. And all he can talk about is how, how low down, how dirty, his new boss is. Imagine so. And so, uh, sooner or later, what he's saying is going to come on to him. You know? He's going to get in trouble. And who, who's miserable? Who's miserable? Not his boss. His boss is just carrying out his job. But this guy don't like him. He liked the guy that was there before him. And so now, this guy is all business. The other guy was, you know, kind of buddy-buddy, that kind of thing. And so, hey, it comes on to you. And you, here's a layman, it's coming on to him. Now, he's appealing to this Jewish woman to get him out of his trouble. So, uh, there he is, on the couch with the queen. Verse 8 says, Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? Here, here's Haman on the bed with, with the queen. What's, the, what's this guy got in mind, you know? What is he saying? Is he going to molest my wife in front of my eyes? Because there he is on the bed with my wife, queen the king says, before my very presence. Is he a nut or what? It's all over for Haman. And let me read you a passage in Psalm 37 that's pertinent to this, these verses. It says in 35, 36, it applies so uh, graphically with what's taking place. It says, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree, yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. God says it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. God says judgment is on the way. <coughs> Another verse in the Bible that I want to share with you. Number three, <coughs> Haman's execution. The last part of verse eight, as the word went, went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. It was the custom of that day. Well, in our day too, when they'd take a man to the gallows to hang him, pull a hood down over his head. They can't do that, or used to do that, when they would electrocute somebody. Shave a place on the top of the head, covers cover his face, if that was so, so desired. Haman 
knew what was coming. He's already covered his head, covered his face in verse 12. He went back in Paris to his own house, covered his own face in humiliation. Go home in humiliation. Covered in condemnation. And so, you think about it. Had his head, had his head covered. Galatians 6, 7 says, be sure your sins will find you out. The Bible says, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. That's the Old Testament version of Galatians 6, 7. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. Haman is reaping what he has sown. It's the irresistible law of God. It's, it applies to the lost. It applies to the saved. Believers as well as the lost. What sort of a man sows, that shall he also reap. That means that you you sow what whatever you you reap. Now, and you think about it. we go out here and we if we begin to practice sin, uh, it's it's going to come home to you. You know, it means you reap whatever you sow. You put a a grain of corn in the ground. Sometimes you reap more than you sow. Put a grain of corn in the ground. When it springs up and it comes up and get a stalk, how many ears of corn is on one stalk? You're going to reap corn if you sow it. And if you sow joy, you're going to reap joy. If you sow gladness, you reap gladness. And uh, you know, if you sow trust, you reap trust. But if you sow sin, you're going to reap sin. You reap what you sow. There's something else. Uh, just think about reaping more than you sow. Think about that. Reaping more than you can sow. And so when you plant, you expect you expect to reap a good crop. You not only reap what you sow, but you reap more than you sow. Something else. You'll reap later than you sow. You sow today, how long does it take for the, for the corn to germinate? It's got to be fertilized, got to be hold around, it's going to take time for that stalk to come up. And so people who sin have the idea, I'm not ever going to get caught. I'm not ever going to have to pay for this sin. And so for a long while, it's like a man that goes up, uh, goes to the to the bank and robs the bank. And he walks out of the bank, he's got he's got the money. And he drives off and sirens is coming, the law comes. He doesn't hear anything about it. A day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, a year goes by. He still hasn't been caught. But one day. One day, he's going to get caught. May not happen right now. Haman was moving up in the kingdom. He was sowing bad seed, wasn't he? Bad seed. He, made a, he, he thought he had, had the king in the palm of his hand. Thought he had the hood wings. He thought he was going to kill all, all the Jews that he hated. He sowed sin, and he's going to reap the whirlwind. They say, King, there's a tree, there's a gallows, there's which Haman has prepared for Mordecai. So look at what the king says in the end of verse 9. Then the king said, hang him thereon. Hang him thereon. Literally he says, hang him on it. Hang him on it. Amen. Hang him on that tree, hang him on that gallows. Sometimes we build our own gallows. I think you would call that poetic justice, hanging on the, on the gallows that he made, on the very thing that he thought that he was going to hang Mordecai on, hang his enemy on. God says, you better be careful, or you'll fall in the pit that you're preparing for someone else. I think it always works that way. 
You remember the enemies of Daniel in the Old Testament? Uh, they decided they would put him in the lion's den. Put him in the lion's den. And uh, I like that story about Daniel, don't you? And here's Daniel in the lion's den. The Bible says the Lord delivered Daniel. The Lord delivered Daniel. Down there in the pit with the lions and said, this is, what, this is what old Daniel said, roll over boys, I'm going to use you as a pillow. Daniel wasn't afraid. Not one little bit. He wasn't afraid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you as a pillow and I'm going to use your tail to switch the mosquitoes away. How about that? The next morning, the king came out and said, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, do you live? And Daniel said, Good morning. Good morning. I wonder if that was a shocker. Good morning. King said, what? And said No, he said, Good morning, King. Watch for breakfast. Watch for breakfast. The Lord, the Lord had been with him all night long, taking care of him, and he. The Bible says they were thrown into the very den of the lions. Here's Haman. He's going to be hung on his own gallows. You remember Pharaoh? And he had all those little babies drowned in the Nile River. Remember that? Before it was over, before it was over, Pharaoh himself drowned in the Red Sea. In the Red Sea. God has a way of poetic justice. They hanged him on his own gallows. So they hanged him on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. This is exactly what God does for the enemies of unbelievers. Oh, of believers. God's provision is our, of our enemies is the tree. The tree. It's the cross. You have three main enemies. You have the world, you have the flesh, and you have the devil. That's our three main enemies. The world, the flesh, and the devil. When Christ died on the cross, your three enemies were crucified with Christ. Galatians 6, 14, the Bible says, by whom the world was crucified unto me. This whole world was nailed to the cross of Christ. What about the flesh? Romans 6, 16 says, the old man was crucified. This flesh. This, it was crucified on the cross of Christ. What about the devil? Hebrews 2, 14 says, that through death Christ destroyed him that had the power of death. Christ became victorious. Our enemies have been hanged on the gallows. Then was the king's wrath pacified. The same word is used in Genesis 8-1 about the flood. The flood subsided. The flood subsided. The king's wrath when Haman was hung on the gallows was subsided. That flood was rising, but it subsided. It was only when Haman was nailed to that cross, or impaled on the cross. Oh, you think about when, when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Hmm. Spiritual truth that we want to go get tonight. Spiritual lesson for every one of us. Haman died on this tree because there was no one to die in his place. Oh, he deserved to go there. It was his. He made it himself. His own sin had created that gallows. But there was no one who could take his place. But you fast forward over to the New Testament. There's another man in the New Testament. This man's name is Barabbas. Barabbas. A type of Haman. You know the story. 
Bible tells him about, about him in the New Testament. He was a thief. He built his own gallows. He deserved to die. Built his own cross. Sure enough, he was scheduled to die on the cross. Now put yourself in your mind for a moment in the place of Barabbas. Can you see him in the jailhouse? He's waiting to be called to be sons, to be taken. Well, God calls us ill. To be nailed to the cross, hung on the cross. Barabbas. Can you see him, see him sitting there waiting on the guards to come get him? He's just, he just there in that cell. And he begins to think about going to the cross. Driving those nails to his hand. His heart must have leaped. Every time he heard the pounding of the hammer as they were building those crosses. You take a, you take a man in a jail cell, he can look out the window and he can see him building that scaffold. And he says, that's for me. That's for me. This has an awful, awful feeling. It has to be an awful feeling. I wonder, I saw a movie years ago, In Cold Blood, a real story. A man had worked on a farm in Kansas. The man always paid off in cash money. Had a big farm, big two-story house. This man left the farm, went down to Texas, got in trouble, got in prison, told two men in the prison about this farm. When they got out of prison in Texas, they made their way to Kansas. One night, they entered the home. They killed a man, his wife, his daughter, killed everybody in the house. When they caught him, they hung him. I can imagine that they looked out the window and they could see those gallows being built, knowing they were going to be hung up there on those gallows. Here's Haman, and here's Barabbas. Haman knows he's going to die. Barabbas knows he's going to die on that cross. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your sins, my sins, have built a gallows for us. Did you realize it? Built a tree, if you will. We all deserve to die on a tree. If, we have, if we'll be honest, our sin that we've committed in this world, we all deserve to die. And so there, we, there says Barabbas. There he says. I wonder if he slept. Probably could sleep. Probably could sleep awake. All the night long, that's all he can think about. Tomorrow, 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 I'm going to die. Tomorrow. Next morning early, they brought in his last meal. He wasn't hungry this morning, in fact, he, he's going to die on the trip. And you think you put yourself in that place. In a little while, when the appointed hour came, he heard the jailer. He's coming. He's coming. Oh my God. Walking down the hall. Hamer said, uh, Barabbas said, I'm, I'm getting ready to die on the gallows. Haman said, I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to die. I prepared by my my own sin. In a moment, Barabbas hears the key turn in the lock. The cell door opens. The creaking kind of makes me think of the radio show years ago. The, the squeaking door. He 
He's thinking. He's thinking. Here he comes. I'm, I'm fixing to breathe my last breath. He hears the door as the door squeaks open. There's a jailer standing in front of the door. He's here for me, he says to himself. I'm going to die on my tree. The jailer looks at Barabbas with a smile on his face. Barabbas, you're free to go. Well, what good news. At the last moment, at the last moment, how many, how many people have been led to the electric chair at the very last moment they get a stay of execution. The governor has ordered your stay. Boy, what a relief. What a relief. The rabbi says, what do you mean I'm free? He said, I, I, I was convicted. I'm guilty. They built a tree for me. What do you mean I'm free? The jailer said, Barabbas, I don't know all the details. I don't have all the answers. But I know one thing. There's a man named Jesus. They're going to put, put this man, Jesus, on the tree in your place. In your place. Ladies and gentlemen, they put that man named Jesus on the tree in your place and in my place. Did they? They nailed him to the cross. I, the Bible don't say, but I can imagine that Barabbas, once he was freed, I can imagine he went and found a place where he could see, see the cross and see this man called Jesus as he was hanging on the cross between those two thieves. One on the right side, one on the left, here he is in the middle. I wonder if Barabbas saw that cross. I wonder if Barabbas said, that tree was made for me. I was supposed to die. But this man named Jesus died on the cross for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to realize something tonight. How awful and how sinful, how, how inhumane Hitler was, Christ died for him too. Same thing with, with Putin. Our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for him. There was Saul. That was Saul of Tarsus. Going about committing murder. Had a godly man named Stephen stoned to death. You see, your sins and my sins have built our own tree. And this man, 2,000 years ago, took our place took our place. First John 2, 2 says, and he is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. And when you think about when Christ died for all of those in the past, all of those in the present, and all of those in the future. As Brother Mark said this morning, he had not yet been even thought of being born. Neither were you nor I. But the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, whosoever will, may go. Whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. I can imagine. I don't know what happened to Barabbas. But I can imagine it made such an impact upon his life.
that he never forgot it. And I hope and pray that he got saved. But I would not say it, whether he did or whether he didn't. But I hope and pray that he did. Christ took my place, took your place on the cross. Would you bow your heads? Our Father in heaven, Lord, we just want to come and thank you for your sacrifice on Calvary's tree. Thank you, Father, for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, that, that you were willing to give your all to pour out your life's blood for my sins and the sins of the whole world. Father, I pray, God, that you would bless this church, bless each and every one here. We're, so, we're all so grateful, so thankful. Lord, I don't ever know if there's someone here that's not saved. I don't know that. And Father, if there is one, I know one thing. I know Jesus died and paid the price of the sins of everybody on the cross. And Lord, if we'll come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved. Lord, we can, we can Lord, put our hand in the nail scarred hand of Jesus and trust Him by faith to save our soul. And Father, I just pray right now, Lord, if, if there's one, now's the time. Today's the day of salvation. Now is accepted time. And I pray, Father, that we'll all be so grateful, so thankful for what you did for our behalf on the cross. Amen. Would you stand, please? If there's one, if there's one, if there's one, you're coming. If there's one.